<laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the Thursday, December 6, 2018 Conservation Commission member, uh, meeting. We'll have roll call of members, starting with Michael. Uh, Michael Croto, alternate. Harry Minzigian. Roger St. Lawrence. Joan McKibben. Tom Lebeck. Marion Godzik, alternate. All right, and absent tonight are um, our new alternate, Andrew Thompson, and John Curtin. Matthew Lepore is absent, and Selectman Kevin Borg is absent. So with that, we will move on to new business. First on the agenda is Morgan Hollis to discuss tax map 22, lot 11, 522 Charles Bancroft Highway. Good evening. Uh, Madam Chairman, and members of the board, my name is Morgan Hollis. I'm an attorney at Gottesman and Hollis in Nashua, and I'm here this evening uh, representing uh, the owner of property, which is identified as 12, uh, I'm sorry, map 22, lot 11. It's uh, Thoreau Development, LLC. It's off of the Charles Bancroft Highway. Um, as you're headed northbound, it's on your left side or west side of the highway. <laughs> Uh, Northern commer uh, Commercial Overlay Districts. And uh, this came before you for your consideration of a development plan back in 2011, I believe. And there were some issues going to the zoning board and everything was pulled back. And my client has uh, taken a look at what could be done on this site and what might be a good use of this site. And we had an opportunity for an informal meeting with uh, Joan and Roger to bat some ideas around and then um, said we'd like to come back and make a presentation of our thoughts, get some feedback without commitment or any kind of formal uh, uh, vote. But we will have to go to the zoning board for some relief and there's no sense us going if we don't have positive feedback or at least not negative feedback from the uh, commission. So... Um, introducing the site, what we uh, what we have is it gets uh, close up to the river, but not on the river, uh, as shown on this site. The river is just off over here. Uh, the property itself has a great deal of wetlands on it, but it has active frontage uh, along the highway. And when this was brought up before uh, for possible uses, uh, there was a requirement of frontage variances and use variances and we were talking about uses that would impact the wetlands. What we've tried to do is take a look at what might be a good use and a reasonable use in the area and what we're proposing or considering proposing is up front would be a gas station convenience store with all of the uh, latest techniques and technologies to make sure there aren't spills or problems. Uh, as you all know, you know, this is in the aquifer district. Aquifer has always been an important protection issue. Um, and drinking water in particular, uh, this area is now serviced by Penichuk water. And so that's a pretty significant change in that if there were some impactful event, whether it was a car uh, driving down the road that rolled over, had a gas event or anything, including effects from a gas station, uh, the impact isn't as catastrophic as catastrophic on the wells as um, might have been five years ago. Uh, on the other hand, technology has uh, ramped up and increased so that more and more of these gas stations uh, are being built in areas which are aquifer sensitive, which turns out to be bigger and bigger areas, as you know, than what they were back years ago. Every area is aqu now aquifer sensitive, so every gas station has to be aquifer sensitive. And um, Tobin Farwell has created this plan and he'll describe it. And uh, we have uh, consultants here dealing with the issues of control of oil spills and gas spills. And in the back, which is a fairly large area, we looked at permitted uses in the district. And uh, really what we came up with is we want a low impact use. We want a low density use for traffic. We want a, a, a use which isn't going to be because it's in the back area, uh, have potential adverse impacts to the surrounding wetlands and the river corridor. And with that, we looked at, uh, thanks to a suggestion made uh, by Joan and Roger, looked at storage buildings as a possibility. So that's what we have We've shown it, and uh, Tobin will describe it, but we've shown everything as being 
outside of the 50 foot no disturb um, and 50 foot buffer and no buildings within the 75 foot building setback requirements. Um, obviously there's little, there's no leach field requirement for storage buildings. We're not proposing any bathroom facilities. So that's another positive to this type of use. The access comes off of um, Charles Bancroft Highway through the gas station, through a controlled point, and that would be the storage facility. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tobin and he can describe pretty much uh, the project. Sure, thank you. Uh, so yes, I guess we'll start with the, with the self-storage in the rear, this is the low impact use. As far as drainage goes, it is gonna be a self-containing, uh, meaning no, no water flows from the buildings and off the pavement into the wetlands directly. It will all be channeled and collected and sent into a large, uh, large stormwater detention pond in this location of the project. This will require uh, uh, variances as we are proposing disturbance uh, greater than, closer than 50 feet from the wetlands for this area. But uh, again, it's for you know, runoff that's contained in the site and it will be detained and treated in that location. Um, uh, all, as far as up front, a large gas station, we met, we discussed this. Um, this is gonna be a canopy gas station, meaning so no water directly runs on it, which is typical of today's. Uh, there'll be PLBs around this, which is positive limiting barriers, which is grooves in the concrete, uh, which uh, collects, you know, if there's any incidental spills, uh, it gets stopped at those limiting barriers. There will also be absorbent material on site. Uh, we talked about too that this, uh, you know, there will be no automatic fill-ups for the for the gas stations. Uh, the uh, you have to monitor your your fuel as you're as you're loading it. Uh, and, and we went even further to say, okay, what happens if we do if we have any uh, material on the ground? We have a catch basin si system that will collect uh, storm water and go to a lined detention basin. Uh, and in these catch basins, or in the, in the last catch basin of the system, we are proposing to have a smart sponge, which is a, uh, it's a, a product that traps hydrocarbons. Uh, so it's a passive thing. It will sit in the, in the, at the water level. And as it comes in, if it comes in contact with any hydrocarbons, it turns black and, and, and traps the hydrocarbons in that material. Um, so, and that's easily detectable. You just look at it. It starts off as white. If it collects the hydrocarbon, it turns black and you, you, you throw it away and put, or take care of it and put in a new one. Also, if the, we are proposing a lined uh, retention pond. Uh, so again, if anything happens in that area, it, it will be further treated. There is an outlet uh, or, or contained. There is a uh, overflow structure, which will then flow to an infiltration basin for normal operation. Um, and this will be further directed down, again, making a, non, a nice long flow path before it does enter the wetlands and, and providing treatment through vegetated means. Um, we are proposing above ground fuel storage. Uh, we feel it's an easier way to monitor it. Uh, it still is in the aqua protection. So a special exception is allowed for a gas station, but because we're in the aqua protection above or below fuel storage uh, requires a variance. Um, so we discussed it and we felt above ground fuel storage is the best way to monitor it uh, and to keep an eye on it. Um, it will be lit uh, and uh, there are other monitoring devices that we talked about. It's, you know, lit for safety. Um, downcast and shielded uh, for parking uh, as well as use in, in the evening hours. We are proposing a car wash as well out in the rear of the site, uh, but that's really a self-capture water system. Uh, you have to do that nowadays even to make it to make it viable because it uses so much water. But uh, uh, so again, self-captures self the water, filters it, and then it's maintained that way. So there's no no water that flows from that off the site. I think I've gone over it, everything. If there's anything I've missed. And I've, How close are you to our property line? Uh, this property line is a, 
I don't have my, what is the scale of this thing? One inch equals 50. So the edge of parking is, looks to be about, at that point, 40 feet away, approximately. The building looks to be, I would say, over 100 feet away, pretty close. And how much frontage do you have on 3A? Three hundred and ninety-five uh, plus is an arc length. I believe. Do we have? Does that number on the plan? I don't know it off the top of my head. It is approximately five hundred feet of frontage. Um, okay, that sounds about right. <clears throat> I only have three ninety-five on the maximum. Fifty. Yeah. Yeah, it's very close to five hundred. And um, did, has wetlands been redelineated? No, it has not. And that will that will that will clearly be done. But we do not anticipate any changes. Uh, the surrounding area has not changed in use. We haven't really done anything to the site, but we, we're we assuming that it will remain the same, and obviously uh, we will have it delineated if and when we move forward. Okay. Questions from the board? Yeah, I have one. Back when you really earlier presentation, which has been a while, I can't be with my recollection. Now, weren't we talking an underground system? It was going to be all bunker tank and the tank could be set in. Right. So and that was, yes. Now, isn't that much more aesthetically pleasing than above ground tank storage? How do you store what? What does yeah? What does the above ground look like, and where is it? Uh, we are proposing it on the north side of the, of the site. Uh, we're going to have that is going to have uh, in a concrete um, right. The tank is inside a concrete vault that is above ground and and, and roofed. Uh, so, in the event that that leaks, it, it gets sealed inside the concrete vault. Now, is there any area that? That you know of in place that we could actually see for comparison, I I, I can't quite envision that. I mean, I, I know at the time I was a strong proponent when you proposed this before with the underground tank. I thought this was a great idea. I'm not saying I'm against the above ground tank. I just the aesthetics are bothering me. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. all right, huh? mm -hmm. We are open. To, this is for discussion only. This was oh, yeah. between ourselves. We thought that that was a hold. Well, they prefer the above ground. Mm -hmm. if well, I, you know, I'm, I'm only speaking as Tom. I'm not speaking as John or, or Roger. Right. 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 I, I, <laughs> Would they I kind be, of agree with that above ground would be. Would yeah, they, just I just, Hi, my name is Michael Writing. I'm with Loreo Engineering, assisting with this. But yeah, what I'm, engineering? Uh, Loreo Engineering. I'm an environmental engineer. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, where you might have seen it is like a DPW yard. Um, very often they look like. Um, I'm going to describe it. It, it. it definitely is a concrete. Sh uh, surface uh and has above kind of it's the above concrete above ground. Yeah. it looks very much like a box mm -hmm. yeah. um and typically you'll see the fire uh, code on it on the side the little symbol there but they sit um and they and they look very much like a concrete planter if you will but you'll see in some cases pipe you know that will come out yeah, of the top of it so um, yeah, right. but it looks very uh much like a retaining wall face it looks uh, stucco face. Um, so it does have a little bit of an architectural finish, mm -hmm. but most of the folks will either put um, some sort of plantings around it, and then it almost starts to mimic the look of like a transformer. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's a utility thing over there, but it doesn't stand out completely like a cell tower, for instance. You know, it's not like something that's How big many tanks would be needed? Or what size tank? Or is it one tank or more than one tank? Uh, right now they're proposing three. Uh, so one for the diesel the and then two for the different types of How many grades. gallons each? Uh, typically, they're about uh, 10,000 gallons each. Uh, are, you familiar, are you familiar with the installation that's taking place up the BJ's in Manston now? What are, uh, there's a, mm -hmm. They're putting those tanks in. I just want to know what that size the is. They're going in right. the ground. They're just Most a plain tank, but they're not seem to be going to any kind of a vault of any kind. Right. I was kind of appalled when I saw that going in because I know when you folks have been in before with this presentation, I thought you had on, you know, it was a nice presentation. And to see what BJ is, and I'm, I'm using the term getting away with because it, maybe it's totally kosher, but just to set those tanks inside the ground just seemed like the wrong thing for me to be having them do up there. Mm -hmm. I liked your original proposal. I'm not saying I'm against this one, but I'm, I'm right. listening. Yeah. yeah, you know, so, you know, one of the things that, that, um, that I was brought into to try to help with the design team was just try to 
work through some of those challenges and specifically the sensitivities of the environment here. And so, you know, um, in my experience and in, in lots of studies that you can, you can look up yourself, you know, whenever they look at uh, contamination to groundwater, the environment, um, when it's associated with sort of petroleum storage, it's always a leaking underground storage tank. Um, you never hear stories about, you know, that there was uh, too many drips uh, or that um, something spilled on the ground and that's what caused someone's well to get contaminated. It's always that underground tank because it's out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. um, they do have controls and, and, you know, that's understandable that that is um, uh, a good mechanism. But um, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, very clear to the board, to the town, that we didn't want to just rely on engineering controls uh, or someone doing, um, you know, a good job and maintaining the inspections. Uh, this is visible for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. So, so this becomes, you know, um, when you're putting yourself out there, and uh, and we we have to do a good job in order to be able to meet those uh, criteria. Of do you have a card with you? By any chance? I do. Yeah. Good. That'd be good. Um, if the tanks were in the ground, would they be in a cement vault? They would be in a similar type of uh, system um, that would have a secondary containment vault. It may not necessarily be a concrete one, but it would be something similar to that, yes. Um, I had a question on um, the, the uh, detention basin in the back behind the, that one, yeah. Let's see. Um, if that overflows, where does it run off to? Oh, it is intended to overlay. There'll be an outlet control structure, and it will be released to the wetlands, which eventually goes uh, into the brook. Well, so where does it gather the drainage from to get to that? So it gathers. This will all be collected. There'll be a swale that goes from, from the lowest point of the pavement into the detention pond, <clears throat> and then there'll be a release structure. You know, I was envisioning on this side. So we will cre create, you know, a berm to create a long flow path and a release structure that goes into that existing ditch line that's here now. Where's the um, the brook from there? It's right at the property line, I think. Yeah, this is this this line represents the two double dots as the brook line. Mm -hmm. That's all going to be impervious all around the storage facility. So if you can just outline the whole area. You're right. Be this impervious and it'll be controlled with what, curbing around it. No, it's, it's going to be pitched inward, right? So this is 30 feet wide, so there'll be a low point, you know, in here, right? There'll be a high point directing stormwater to each side of the building, and then that will... Okay, so the, the drainage yeah, from all that impervious is going to that detention? Yes. It's almost like Shaw's. I know. Except that, you know, you don't have much control of what people are storing in there, and if it drains off into that, into the you're not impervious... You're not allowed to, I mean, like, you're not allowed to obviously store flammable or hazardous materials. Officially. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Amazingly. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's that. Uh, I have a question. Sure. <clears throat> Back at the gas station. Now, I assume you're going to have bathroom facilities, correct? That's correct. All right, which means you've got to have a septic tank. Mm -hmm. And when he was giving the presentation, he mentioned nothing about septic tanks. Down in the down in the by the where by the um storage that would be but up by the bath the yeah. gas station right right we do it we do a below pavement uh, uh, leach field in that there will be right we'll have a chambered system uh, that meets the seventy five foot wetland setback requirements hundred foot soils are fine it was yeah. it was sort of what are the operating hours of this proposed gas station. Um, seven to ten, something like that. Yeah. Seven to nine. Mm -hmm. Lighting, lighting is a big issue because we have the conservation area just to the north. Um, yeah. Lighting and litter, and uh, lighting, noise, trash. Yeah. Uh, trash. You know, if this gets as far as the planning board, I would, from the conservation end of it, demand notes on the plan that trash would be picked up daily, weekly. Lighting would be shielded way away from us. They don't said they were going to use down lighting. Anyway. Well, you have to for the regs. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Hundred well. foot setback on leach fields from wetlands. Um, 
Michael, what about Limerlack? Limerlack would be quite interested in this lower Merrimack River. It would um, come into play because it is within the quarter mile. Of the, the river. river. Yeah. So they would probably, well, I mean, um, certainly if they were going to get permits from. Well, when they would have Limerlack would wait till there was a formal plan. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to get permits from DES or something for, you know, stormwater or whatever, or something to do with that effect, then um, certainly the Lower Merrimack River Advisory Committee would probably come into play because they're going to want to make comments. Well, they're and they're within a quarter mile of the river. Right. So, do they generally want to see stuff when it's in conceptual form, Merrimack? Um, usually, it's. Um, when we usually get it, it's usually it's part of a project that's you know going to be. I know they like um, to be told early on. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, if they're willing to, you know, contact the Lower Merrimack River Advisory Committee and see what you know, contact Gene Porter, he's the chair, and um, you know, want to arrange a meeting. Um, certainly, that's that's a possibility. I have another question in the holding pond that. Uh, it's going to collect all the runoff now. Is this going to be run uh, from the from the gasoline station and the storage area both? Right. So there's two separate systems. One for the for the project up front, the gas station area. Yeah. We have a series of uh, uh, of stormwater ponds, uh, detention ponds, and then, and then the final infiltration. Where are the series of ponds? Up well, there? so so it's kind of split. Some of it here's we could have one nice shallow up front. Uh, we have this one, and we have this one. And they're not going to be connected with that holding pond in the back? No, they are not. Where's that runoff going to come off, the one that's close to the river, the holding pond? This holding pond? Yeah. It's a, I intend to use the, the – there's this ditch that's here now. This is the brook. No, no. What's running into it? Where is it coming from? All the, the storage the, the storage, storage building. All the storage building. From the storage area? Oh, yeah. That was, that that's was all clear. Here. Drainage line goes from all storage units back. That's what he's asking. Oh, in other words, at what point does it go that way? Yeah, in here is the, is the shift, right? Uh, at this point, this storm water is gathered. Obviously, we can't we can't catch the, between here and here. We can't catch that that water, but everything else that we can catch. Okay, so it's coming from the storage area. Mm -hmm. then, right? this, so this, all this goes to this basin. Mm -hmm. Everything up front here goes to these basins. Is that basin in the back built for a 25-year storm, or what? What is it built for? It looks kind of small from here. Oh, yeah, we haven't sized it. We, oh, this is the preliminary, oh, okay. right? This is our concept. This is oh, what okay. we intend to do. Okay. So nothing would go into the two wetland areas to the north there from the storage area? Those two wetlands. No, keep north, going towards the morning. North, keep going. Yeah, right there. North, north, north is this way. Just. Yeah. yeah. Well, nothing will go into these. Nothing will go into those. Yeah, nothing will yeah. go into these, this area. Nothing will go into this area. You know, this is the, the brook on this side. And then this is where it flows out. Right. There's no proposed impacts to, to wetlands. No. So that was one of the no proposed well, while you're taking the drainage though into the to overflow into a wetland and into the stream. That's not disturbing it but as that, far as impact. Use the word disturbing. Yes. Yeah. Impact okay. and disturbing are very different. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that we set out to do right away was to make sure that to recognize the value of this wetland and not disturb it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Roger. Your um, storage facility, is is that basically going to be for like household items and stuff like that? Are you going to have an area where you store cars and RVs and trucks like that? No, we, we looked at that and uh, we decided not to go with that. Okay, because a lot of them do. Right. Right. Yeah. And will you have a conceptual uh, picture of what this gas station is going to look, look like when you come back? And the storage units look like. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Renderings. Right, right. One other question. Um, maintenance over the winter. Uh, plowing, salting, yeah, sanding, yeah. and that's all going to flow into that 
Screen. That's the intent of that, right? Okay, and that's not going to affect wetlands? Not any more than it does the salting and sanding the highway yeah. now. Mm. Yeah. You could have no salt. We'll have Lou Karen looking at it. <laughs> yeah, you could have no salting back in the in the storage area. Yeah. Could there be no salt in there? Yeah, there and it's certainly, you know, it's not like everybody that not like this, everybody goes here every day. No. Mm -hmm. it's, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could see having a no no salting makes perfect sense. That uh but they do have the ability to go there every day if they wanted to. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you have quite a few units. Um, how many – have you sized out how many units would be there? They'd I have the square footage of how many units. Okay. Uh, total storage building of 32,800 square feet of building. Okay. Well, they use of various sizes, them. obviously. Some they they make they different sizes, I think, yeah. yeah. They vary them all over the place. Yeah, the, the, what's shown is a 30-foot wide uh, – 30 foot wide building with various lengths. Would there be a um, on-site person there most 12 hours a day or how would that work? Do you know yet? Don't know. We, we discussed it at first having one, you know, maybe one of these being sort of an office, but then the bathroom came up. And so we, we were in flux about trying not to, but we don't know what uh, the, the so demands. Do other places have just a, a master key to get in and then a key to your unit? That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Many of them have gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Like, let yourself in and out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Card reader. Yeah. 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 Swipe it. Mm -hmm. But you have access to it 24 hours yeah. a day. Yeah. Uh, some places do. Some places some, some do not. So yeah, that might be something that the there planning there board could look at. They could hold it till 11 o'clock, or they. I mean, yeah. there's no either way. Oh. Um, but that's not a. Problem. We, could secure, we could put security cameras if, mm -hmm. if needed. But that would be good too, not to have 24 hours because yeah. you are down there in the back, not visible. Right. Um, I don't know if the commission wants to make any comment, yay or nay, or it's non-binding. It's just conceptual. No, I, 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 yeah, I think I would say is that I, I did prefer the underground tanks in the, the original concept, uh, but I'm, I'm open to either one. I think it's, it's time that the piece of land be used for something. You're paying taxes on it. You, you know, it's time to use it for something. I mean, I'm, if this is the right thing, I'm not sure, but I think that, you know, the gentleman's got a right to invest in this property. He's been sitting there and, I agree that, you know, you have a right to use the property and it has been sitting there for a while, but I just don't want the Morris Falls property to be in negatively impacted with lighting and trash. We have yeah. a nice wildlife area there and we have to keep it that way. And I think what you said earlier, John, about the planning board, I think that we just need to be instrumental in what is yeah. recommended and the planning board and, and get go the along with it. And, and on the plan. And and we, we, security cameras should go in if we get it. And, we're certainly open to, you know, creating a vegetated buffer between us yeah. and them, which would also, you know, yeah, it's a trap to trash, mm -hmm. but yeah. that's, that's what it does as well as, as creating a light block. And, um, you know, we, we obviously we have an interest to make this place look good as well. Mm -hmm. um, and when you say trap the trash, I mean, I have gone as far as the new market basket in London Dairy. Go in there at Christmas time and say, <laughs> you have this beautiful place here, pick up the trash out there. <laughs> So, and a, a vegetated buffer would be a good idea to keep the lighting down from us and, um, you know, just have people be aware of their surroundings. And, you know, like Rick Charbonneau says, we like this town. We like to keep it clean and neat. Right, right. So. I, think, I think that, you know, I think they've done a good job tonight. And I think yeah. they're concerned to answer our questions and answer our wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we have more questions we come up with, we'll give you a call. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Will there be a Dunkin' Donuts in there? Or? <laughs> that <No>. was my <laughs> thought. <laughs> I thought of that too. It's early in the process yet. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking about it. Yeah. The one in the Canal Street National, they put up a honey bee bone sign. And Everybody yeah, sure it was going to open this two years. They still haven't opened it yet. It's like five years now. That it's been a long time. Thank you. Somebody's got a lot of money. I had a lot of money. Somebody had a good plan. Yeah, they said he's got three stations like that. The one in Hampshire, two last year. You're familiar with one in Canal Street, right? Yeah. Next on the agenda is Norman Doe Associates, Adele, and Penachuck Water Main Project that is done, actually. <laughs> It is done, but we felt it was appropriate to come to the commission and explain to you how and why. Okay. 
So thank you for putting us on the agenda. I'm glad you called. <laughs> Uh, again, Adele Fiorella with Normado Associates. We put together the permit applications. I have with me here tonight Alex Rocky from Ty and Bond, the engineer, and also John Bovere from Penichuk Waterworks. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to do a quick housekeeping matter, much to my embarrassment. Um, the application that I sent to you had the Miramac tax map in it, not the Litchfield tax map. So I brought four copies of it with me that I could give to you if you would like to. Sure. Insert it in there. Okay. Here, please. Hey, one side of the river, the other. What the heck? Thank you. Thank you. Merrimack won't mind. No. <laughs> so I apologize for that. So, yes, we were in front of the commission in the past for this project um, to run the water main from the Merrimack side to the Litchfield side across the Merrimack River. Um, we originally had proposed to um, install that pipe via trenching cut and cover with an excavation, which is the way it was installed. Um, but when the contractors were out there to do the work, they realized because of the steep slopes and the challenges of working within the river, um, that they wanted to put a, um, a trestle platform out for the reach of the crane to do the excavation. So we, um, we did mention to the DES that we had some constructability changes. And at that time they said, well, sounds like a field change. Let's just do an as-built plan when you're done. And um, so that's the way we're moving forward. Uh, but when all the work was done, um, when we looked at the impact numbers, they didn't meet the 20% threshold for a permit amendment and an as-built plan. So we had to refile a permit for the new impacts. And part of that is because our original impacts were so low, it didn't take much to get up to that 20%. So um, the best way to explain to you the differences in the impact numbers is in the application on page 15. There's a table in there. And um, we had originally permitted uh, wetland impacts temporary 1,003 square feet. By installing the, um, the trestle platform, we actually had reduced those impacts to 423 square feet. So we had a a negative difference of 580 square feet less of the temporary impacts. However, our permanent impacts did go up, um, and that is because by constructing this platform and going into the river from the adjacent to the original impact area, we extended the, the impacts along the river. So our permanent impacts um, went from 1,022 square feet to 2,803 square feet with an increase of 1,781 square feet. And that's predominantly um, the Gabion mattresses that we use to stabilize the banks. Um, we also, again, had bank impacts because of that, an additional 47 uh, linear feet. So that's all explained in the application. Um, with that impact table, the plans that you have in front of you show the top plan is what we had permitted initially, and the bottom plan is what is the as-built condition. Sorry. Oh, yeah. The other way around? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All you have to do is switch it over. Flip it over. <laughs> 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 Flip it over. Flip it over. Um, I'll, I'll let Alec explain <laughs> the difference in the impacts on the plan. So, so the bottom is what was proposed the top is what happened yes exactly so <laughs> on on the bottom plan i uh i colored it in the pink is the expansion and so on the top plan um it's just the green is the temporary in the river the yellow is the permanent the gabion mattress and then the blue is just the, um, so does structure. that mattress come out at the end or does it yes. get vegetated it comes out do you know what page number those two pictures are on uh, no, most of the photos are written. It's further, it's, it's back. towards the back of the application, um, back middle maybe. But you can see the original, and then you can see the the uh, after the fact where okay. the, the gabions come up. Um, and just, just like how Fish and Wildlife had had the bank restored when they put in their fish hatchery, it's the same kind of uh, wire mesh with stone mm -hmm. uh, slope stabilization. So were you in that area that there already was a cut there? Yes. Yeah. The and so yeah, the original, the original, which is the green and the yellow on this plan, is is the width of the original cut that was there, and then to make 
access for the crane is why they doubled more or less the width so they could get the crane down there and then also have room for trucks and excavators to get the dredged material out and then back in. Um, what month were you done? Was it done? November. So yeah. it has it revegetated? Um, no, but they have um, loamed and seeded and they did a tacking to, to stabilize okay. it. Okay, good. And there were uh, tree planting requirements in the original application and all those please have, uh, trees have been planted as well. Um, and so the contractor will, they're, they're the, the warranty on those is either. Right. So they'll, right. they'll be maintaining them along with the loam and seeding, make sure all that the slope stabilizes. Now, is it actually connected to the system now on this side? Yes, yes. But it's not in service, right? It'll be very shortly. It actually can move water back and forth if it had to. Uh, the pump station is going through startup procedures and testing beginning tomorrow and into next week. So it'll be ready to go. So it connects into a talent room. Is that where it connects? It's uh, right at, connected to uh, from Route Three A. Yeah. So it's um, right at the, uh, the parent farmhouse, yeah. and yeah. then all the way over by where the um, <clears throat> the hall. What is it? Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the road, but uh, the, the uh, where the Merrimack wastewater treatment plant is. Mast. Mast Road. Thank you. So, but where does it go on this side? It gets up to Talent Road, goes by the parent farmhouse. Then does it go down Talent Road? Uh, it, there's already existing main in Talent Road okay. and on Charles Bancroft Highway. So we come in, come up out of the river on the Litchfield side. You head north for a little bit, go around the fencing for the fish hatchery, then turn uh, east and goes directly and ties right in at Talent Road. Just, just south of the intersection. Well, they put the hydrant right there at the top of the construction site. Right. Yeah. So and that's the water from there go? That, where it goes from there, it can go. It goes pretty much straight down Talent Road. Okay. It, I mean, it's but, the rest. Of the so system. did you go on the road to connect that? I mean, it's I already. It's, it was already there. I don't know how we missed it. And I was, was going to say. I Water's didn't already been on Charles Bancroft in that area. Oh, so was they hooked up for, for Gilchrist Farms. I know they ran the water for Gilchrist yeah. Farms, but I thought it was on the opposite side of Three A. It's on that no, side. It's of 3A? On this side. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I yeah, guess, that hydrant. been watching every day. That hydrant by. that's down over the down over the hill there will actually be coming out when we're done because it's too far off the the road and everything. We just use it for flushing and in right. testing. So, mm -hmm. how does that? You know, there's been a lot of work on Hillcrest that has nothing to do with no, nothing. Yeah, that, that's nothing that's to do with Hillcrest this. was a replacement of a of a, uh, an existing main that was corroded Bad. and failing after 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How yeah. does this? Affect the Dame Dusharm well, if at all. I mean, it's just it, we're just taking. It's and, the water uh, we get that. Yeah, now. I you know. can't really answer how it will definitely affect it, but most of our demand is going to be taken up by uh, this interconnection. Now, yeah. is it across the river, the not under the river? It's it's in the banks of the river. Yeah, and then across the bottom, it's it sits right on the bottom of the river. It does sit on yeah. the bottom, and it's armored with a with a. The uh, concrete that we call them teepees, but they're like triangular. Yeah, so it's, that'll it's about withstand the current and yep. the ice. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, each each so. one of the the concrete teepees is is five thousand pounds. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so there's there's about two hundred and two hundred and fifteen feet of those of those teepees, and then it goes back into uh, being buried in the river bank, and it's mm -hmm. got big eighteen inch uh, riprap armor stone. Mm -hmm protecting it as it transitions to get buried again. Mm -hmm. um, so so you can send water from Nashua over to here and from here to Nashua, is that the idea? No, no. no. it only no. goes just one here. way, it comes just over to just the just the From the water from treatment, the water plant, treatment right. plant over to here. Right. And then can go off to everywhere, Pelham, wherever. Yeah. Uh, Pelham down into Hudson, mm -hmm. all over. How did they block off the river? They, they didn't. They were just worked in the. They, they did. Um, they what did, are those dams? dams? Did you have dams? copper dams? Yeah, the, yeah. The copper dams. The one on the Litchfield side mm -hmm. was only in for maybe three weeks. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, they put it in. The, the sequence was the Merrimack side, which is a much longer right. copper dam, was about 125 feet. Mm -hmm. um, actually, about 150 feet. They put that in. They did all their excavation. Then they did. Um, some clearing of the center of the river to make sure there wasn't any big obstructions in the way. Um, and I don't and the, know. Crawford, the Crawford Dam 
actually just diverts the water over away from the work area and oh, down. It, it, it was, it was they, they put the, the copper dam in as just a turbidity control. So when they were excavating in the banks, so that's why it only extends out 150 <laughs> feet because after that it was just laying on the river bed. So the, the copper dam on the Merrimack side, 150 feet on the Litchfield side, it was reduced to only about 75 feet long. And so they, they excavated the material and on the Litchfield side, the whole pipe had already been strung across. And so they shifted it to one side, did the dredging, moved it back and then buried it. Mm -hmm. Good. Should have sat there with binoculars and watched. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I would have walked down to see that because it sounded like it would have been an interesting project to look at. There's a, there's a lot of pictures. You'll see, you'll see a little bit of the similarity because next year on the other side of the river will be constructed our oh, new, the new river intake. intake. Yeah. It'll look very similar to what you might have missed. And, and I had a, a pet peeve. Why'd you have the ribbon coming, cutting on the Merrimack side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we weren't even invited. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't our call. <laughs> we, just, we just showed up. It was a jerk with the white shirts. I wasn't invited either. So okay. wow, <laughs> that's big. It was. It was a cold day. It was a cold and rainy. I wasn't going hang out, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> rain was no fun. <laughs> it was a beautiful that setting. Is that um, yeah. The salmon facility owns. That was part of the pr issue. Was it getting permits from the feds? Yeah. yeah, they own. Leary's have first option to buy it back, buy it back yeah. mm -hmm. but they own the still own the salmon facility and um, the state does. Yeah, no feds, no, federal, feds, federal yeah. government, but they own the right of way, or then it goes up to the parent yeah. property. Penish must goes, own the runaway right away. Do you have an easement through there? The, the, there's there's, a, there's a driveway that goes yeah. down to the back. That's right. Owned, um, you know, I color. believe it's the parent. The <laughs> parents own the top of it. That, the yeah. top no, of it. No, or no, I'm not sure exactly no, how it goes, but yeah, it goes through the, uh, the parents' right. property. Right. It right. goes right. back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and to another. Right. There's two other houses right. that are on the left there. If you're heading towards <laughs> the river, we have an easement from U.S. It's a well, it's a license from U.S. Fish and Wildlife to cross their property, and then an easement from the parents. From the parent family, yeah. mm -hmm. Libby family. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. And just one other uh, item. We are working on an amendment for the work above the bank for the shoreland. Um, that will be an amendment, just a letter with attachments updating. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a copy of that okay. when it's ready. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for the maps. Yeah. All righty. Moving along. <clears throat> um, the planning board held a site walk at Mel's. And I wanted the Conservation Commission to um, hold one, but our attorney advised that we should do one site walk with the fire department and building official and the conservation. So we're not going to schedule anything right now. Um, Is another site walk for Mills again? Not at this point. Not at this point. Not at this point. Not relevant. Mm. What is this one for? No, we'll discuss a little we'll bit more of it later. Okay. Um, wetland reviews. Uh, we have a Panachuk. Uh, that was a Panachuk. That's Never what mind. they just that did the after effect the application. Then I have yeah. a H123 transmission line structure replacement. They increased the, um, <coughs> where they're, I think they were doing 23 or 46 poles. I forget what it was. Replacements. They increased the pads a little bit. Um, move, shift them 10, 12 feet. And I said they didn't have to come back for that. Mm -hmm. But if anybody wants to um, look at the. That's the, what that uh, registered letter I had was from them. That's what it was? Yeah. Okay. It looked like there was a Z in it, so I thought it was a Z. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, a TZI. Yeah. Yeah. And GZI, yeah, yeah. yeah. GZA environmental. Yeah. 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 That's good. So that's what that is. Um, okay. Tree view view for Pabios. Unfortunately, the new people aren't here. Um, let me have a tax map, please. You should be aware that I get a lot of phone calls regarding taking down of trees. The latest one I had, I went out today on um, Annandale. Lady wants to take some trees down behind her unit just because they're dead trees. So I pulled the large plan to make sure the trees are on her property. They are, or on Annandale's property. Um, the association has to agree. The association is telling her 
if you take trees down, leave the wood there. And I said, no, you don't want to do that. It's going to cause attract, attract termites. Attract carbon to ants and, <laughs> yeah. and termites. And yeah. Um, so they thought there was a conservation easement. I have to just explain to them about the difference between the wetland setback and a, they don't have a conservation easement. They have a wetland setback. But you folks should be aware that I get these calls. If I ever decide to retire, which I say, it just be counting me out of a pot in the pine box. I'm never going to retire. <laughs> but, Use um, the dead trees you can in the pine box. You, yeah. can, you can afford oak. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. I go out and I went on this one today and I told her, well, um, she doesn't like them aesthetically. So I told her to tape them and then let's see what we're dealing with. She's going to have to pay for taking them down. The association's not just interested in taking them down. But they're not on our property, right? No, but they're 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 in the they're in the no cut zone for the wetlands, probably. Then that's what you have to decide if, when you pull the big plan if they're in the wetland area. Because the, the buildings are right at the seventy five foot setback. I mean, they are on the seventy five foot <laughs> setback line. Then you have a twenty five and a fifty foot no disturbance area. So I told her to um, tape them. They're just the Fairly small trees. It's not, I told her to leave the big oaks. She has a lot of bittersweet down there. So I told uh, her if she gets um, a contractor, a arborist down there, maybe they could cut some of the bittersweet at the bottoms because it's just going to wreck havoc with the mm. other trees. Mm -hmm. The other one I looked at was on Pilgrim Drive. A guy had a wetland in the front and he wanted to take some trees down. I looked at that and I said, yeah, go ahead. And um, But these are the calls that we get have been getting Kind so are you not supposed to cut down even dead trees in the if wetlands? It's, if it's if it's a going to hit a danger to your building or your Children kids or, or yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, you can take them it's down. A, it's, a, the, it's a common sense call. Is what it is. Uh, some of the plans say call the conservation commission first. Mm -hmm. A lot of the newer plans say that. That's why we're getting the calls. So somebody has to just go out and look at them. So that's all on that. Um, old business. Anybody have any comment on the tree removal? Yeah, this is pretty much a common sense thing. Mm -hmm. um, just call Roger. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just call just Roger. Call just call Roger. He'll take care of it. Okay. So, yeah, we need a, He's got a, little, a mean chance. A little light on that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> a tree removal person. That's right. You can have a title. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Thompson was going to hold, or did hold the GPS workshop. I was the only one who showed up, so we didn't have the workshop. <laughs> Try again next year or in the, the spring. Spring, yeah. spring, maybe. Mm -hmm. Morris Falls Sightwalk, we did have two people come. I guess 30 people had expressed interest, but maybe the Saturday after Thanksgiving wasn't such a good idea. I don't know. It was still um, full. Mm -hmm. Two people, they were um, quite thrilled with the walk, and they went all the way down to the river and Matt gave them only two, people. two people. Yeah, mother and daughter showed up. Wow. Yeah, at least somebody showed up, so they'll tell two friends. And they, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. got a big history lesson on the whole area. Nice. Uh, I still have not heard, and Matt wants to do another walk, maybe Birch Street in the spring. Mm -hmm. I still have not heard from the surveyor on the Birch Street property. I have called. His voicemail is full. I sent numerous emails. I don't know what else to do. And Penichuk as what we just looked at. Um, cleanup day. We still got political mm -hmm. signs out there everywhere. I took one off Hillcrest. <laughs> nice. Good, yes. thank you. Ah. Oh, and I looked at the offsite signs on. Um, this isn't a conservation issue, but sell your house or I'll buy your house. Yeah, right. Yeah, those. I went to pull them down. They're up there with a washer and a nail. You can't pull them off. So I called. Yeah. And I have to call again and, and tell them. I told them there's no offsite signs and. They're still there. So um, well, that's, what, that's up to the who, building who's doing whatever they do. Building now. inspector. Yeah, whatever they do. No, it's they not do the now. building inspectors. Code enforcement. Oh, yeah, what they have one of those now? What they? Sure, I'll tell them. Yeah, tell them to do something. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. offsite signs. Give them a job. Yeah, give them a job. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't taken the flags on yet, has he? Yeah, there's one still up. I just see. I seen one up the other day. Yeah. Um, cleanup day. So there's no snow on the ground, but everybody's time is pretty tight this time of year. I can't do those anymore. I know. Okay. Yeah. So we just. I think we'll do a little spring. spring. I mean, spring. if we can, like you said, if you see a sign or something you think you can take care of, just take care of it. I'm gonna or, try. Or, I'm gonna try to get to the corner Hillcrest this weekend. 
I, 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 I had stashed a pile of political signs before the snow came, and I think most of them are still there. But I'll take them up and give them to. to yeah, you have to just to, pull mm -hmm. the wire out, put the wire in the wire bin yep. in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you legally can take them down. No, now, yeah, now the days have gone yeah. by. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we have seventy-five mm -hmm. hours, seventy-two hours. Basically, any sign out that you can take down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no offside signs. Kinds. No offside signs. You you want to sign, take it. Yeah. Um, next meeting, January third. If everybody likes that date. That's not New Year's Eve. It's not New Year's Eve. <laughs> I don't even party on New Year's Eve, so I couldn't make that one. Yeah. And um, yeah, rainfall we do New report. Eve. Oh, boy. Do we get any rain, Roger? Rainfall? Do we get any rain? He's the um, rain man and the, and the tree man. Hmm. For, the, for the month of November, we had 18 points in the house that I've lived in for 40 years. Yeah. And we, we have a sump pump in, in the uh, cellar. Yeah. And sometimes in the spring, if we have a real wet spring, mm. it'll run for a bit. Mm -hmm. That pump has been running for uh, <laughs> probably almost two weeks now. I believe yeah. it. Mm -hmm. it. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. the, the ground is just so saturated. Mm -hmm. Like that's like the river. Uh, I, I bet the river is as high now. In as Jan, it, April. It, yeah. April. Yeah. It's an April yeah. hike. Yeah. It has been for months. Spring runoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had 12 inches of snow for the month of uh, November. Mm -hmm. uh, the first snow flurries I noted was on the 15th in the morning. Mm -hmm. The first snowstorm was was on the 16th. But uh, yeah, we had plenty of rain. The drought is over. <laughs> well, the, the, the one advantage with so much rain is the amount of discharge of human waste out of Manchester area this year was astronomical. Mm. I mean, astronomical. They have been dumping raw sewer into that river for the entire summer. Uh, well, out of why they're not out, out of Manchester? Out of the not out of the treatment plant. Yeah, it must be where else would it come from? I, I do. Treatment I have supposed to be sending Class B water out. Well, have not, you any said anything it's about that, Michael? Yes, no. Yeah. I haven't heard anything about it. Charlie's dogs end up with human waste all over when he goes swimming. I mean, go, let's go oh. canoeing in the Merrimack River and go eat shit. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Uh, this is, I, I can't believe they're allowed to get away with that. I don't know who's, who should be they should be responding to. but I think they still have combined sewer overflows in Manchester, don't they? Yeah, yeah I think they do. Isn't that the EPA supposed to? No, one of those agencies. Huh? But I just, I mean, Charlie's child, dogs have been, have been so covered with feces so many times. What's that? Can you interest them in books it? I don't know. All I know is I'm, I'm assuming out of Manchester. But Manchester put up a new smokestack a while ago, like I want to say five, six, seven years ago, that was supposed to alleviate the smell. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe that Manchester, the treatment plant would be. Well, I mean, it's human there. waste and it's coming from somewhere. Uh, so. I know that the, um, I think it was Massachusetts. I think it was the um, Merrimack Watershed Council. They're out of Lawrence. Right. Yeah. I, I, and I know they've been making inquiries up in Manchester oh, about okay. discharges okay. because we'll they've been getting a lot of it. So I picked, it, yeah, yeah. I, I picked up a little sun paper one day, about two months ago, read the gas station caught my eye. I said, Merrimack river pollution, mm -hmm. or Merrimack pollution or something like that. So yeah. I immediately thought Merrimack, but it was the Merrimack, Merrimack yeah, and, but they were talking about the discharges south of us yeah. astronomical. Yeah. Every one of those communities down there were dumping raw sewage on a daily basis. Like, like they haven't done for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, here we are. We spent billions cleaning up this mm -hmm. valuable yeah. resource, and these these so-called officials are, are just mim mimicking them what yeah. law enforcement is supposed to be. I mean, I, you know, I don't know who should be answering to it, but uh, I remember yeah, one I time. Know, you remember I mean, Joan? You remember Joan when they wanted to put a subdivision up in Manchester at the west end? And up at where? At the very west end, the very north end of Manchester, and it was going to run straight raw sewage into the river. And we I, were you still were you living in town at that time? We fought it. And I don't know whatever happened. They probably built the houses and they probably run the raw, raw sewage into the river well, anyhow. DES, DES should know. It's DES, yeah. She would know something. That's yeah. Going on. I mean, they but I, I mean, I know that there was legislation in Massachusetts to regulate discharges mm -hmm. from CSOs. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that ever went through or not, I don't know. But I know down in, like in the Amesbury area where the Randack mm -hmm. River is, yeah. there was a big push to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think by the mayor and then a lot of people, a lot of public officials down there were trying to get it reformed. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whatever happened, came of it. But I do know that there was, they. I know that the person who was in charge of the uh, Merrimack Watershed Council has been, Looking into the issue yeah. of discharges coming out of. It'd be good if you could keep if you get more update just to keep call, us updated. And maybe try and call on Manchester Conservation to see if they know anything. Well, Todd, did you say that you have actually seen some pollution? Oh, Charlie has, yeah, Charlie has. But, but how do you know what Charlie kind has. it is unless they've tested it? Well, it's it's on it's on his dogs when they come in covered with human waste. 
and he takes them up and throws them in the, the brook and cleans them off. Now they won't go in the river anymore. They know, they know better. They know if he's in the river, then they go, throws them in the ice cold brook that runs through the farm stand. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, I know it. <laughs> no, I mean, because, you know, I go down to the bank and look mm -hmm. occasionally. And yeah. I haven't seen any you know, real uh, difference mm -hmm. other than mm -hmm. it, well, you know, the river's high. running yeah. high. The river's running yeah. very high. It's an April high, as we just talked about a few minutes ago. It's, it's basically an April high right now, which seen is good. It's flushing it out. I mean, it's, that's the advantage to yeah. it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of debris. Mm -hmm. come down yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cleaning out everybody's backyard on the river. Yeah, um, I didn't print the November minutes, so I guess we'll we'll hold off on. I didn't even get a chance to read them. I guess we'll hold off on mm -hmm. approval of minutes. Anybody have anything else before we go into non-public? Nope. And we'll be going to non-public. RSA ninety-one <clears throat> eight. Three, two, D. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so Tom and Roger. And let's do a roll call vote. Marion? Um, Marion, I didn't appoint you, but I'll appoint you as a voting member. Sorry. Good okay. Night. Aye. Tom? Yes. Joan, yes. 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 To go into non public. Yes. Okay, we will go into non public at 7.55. And we will not be coming back out. And we will not be coming back out of non public except to adjourn. <laughs>